you get hit and this is like what you become. You're just like, you can't look away. So I'm gonna talk about what I want for each character, okay? And we're gonna talk about what I want for the system changes in general. D it depends on how they want to change the game. So if, if they keep the damage the same, I am okay with them buffing FD. FD to compensate for damage like that is good, I think. Whether it be pushback more, which I'm sorry, Soul Players, it may hurt. A lot of the strike throw characters would get hit through that way. But basically, that's like one of the best ways to stabilize that sort of thing. Even though, like, honestly, I don't think like any of those characters are a problem. Problem. Risk in this game is such a huge factor that ultimately it covers a lot more stability on defense, but also it removes the problems of risk without actually like really re adjusting it while also kind of keeping the same feel of the game. But if they reduce damage, then they don't need to do that at all. It also depends on how they reduce damage because again, like it does not matter if like it Soul is a perfect example of this because Soul in terms of how he hits you, he's not always going to kill you. Like let's say if he hits you with like counter hit 5 H or something, like that's, this is a great example. If Soul hits you with counter hit 5 H, he's probably gonna do a lot of damage to you. If he hits you with regular hit 5 H with, with meter, he may do a lot of damage to you. If he hits you with 5 H with no meter, then his damage is very low. Soul is a great example of like how you want characters to be designed. Again, if you have that in mind, you can play raw risk reward against them at any time. Now, the reason for that is because you can play direct rock, paper, scissors around their concepts, right? Simple enough. It's very, very simple. I'm going to give you an example of a character who breaks this basic line and how I think would be a good example of who should get hit harder. It's Nago. And the reason for that is because Nago has God Buttons, right? Which is fine. He should have God Buttons because that's his mechanic, right? Like he's like 30 frames, 2S, which is insanely good. He's got like the God 5K. All these things are great. He should have God buns like this, but there's one thing that's a big problem with his, with his design. Can you guess what it is? There's one thing that it's, it's one thing, but it, it like ruins it. And it's in this, it's this command grab ruins his character. Almost all the characters in the game, they all have a direct weakness or a kind of way to approach rock, paper, scissors with. In cases of Soul Kai, you can make a very general game plan around around their strategies, right? If he bites you, he gets to run offense on you. It's it's like what, five, six seconds? In any interaction in those five or six seconds, they're all RPS situations you have to guess correctly on. If you guess incorrectly on either of them, one, you're omitting risk. Two, it's also a matter of he gets to force not just like a advantageous situation, but you can also force a safe one because you can run like, I think eight seconds of offense with Nago and just do like 25% chip. So you can see like characters like this are the most problematic in, in Strive, right? They're directly powerful because they force you to interact in ways that are always leaning heavily into their favor. Whereas most characters will have like a very, just a very, like a agreeable discrepancy between like where they can get substantial damage and where they can't. Everything else I don't mind about this character, but I'll tell you if they made not if they left Naga the same and they removed his his bite drain, I would leave him as is. That's all I need. <laughs> That's it. I don't care about anything else. If you did that, I think he'd be balanced. Alternatively, like uh, what they could do is nerf his general damage to where playing that RPS isn't as bad. He's a character that typically outranges you, but also forces like ex extremely bad RPS on you if he gets close to you. But by having that spacing, unless you outmove maneuver him or have a matchup in that way, right? It's quite hard to deal with him. Ram is like kind of in the same boat because not only does she have the same sort of mechanics in like sword pressure, right? Where it's like the risk award is obscenely skewed in her favor and the interactions usually mean that you have to commit harder or you have to wait it out, which in turn makes the risk award worse, which again, through if you have to wait something out because of how risk works, it means that no matter what, she's going to only get better. The longer you wait, the more meter she gains, which means <laughs> You get the point. <laughs> One of the changes I think that that made her go from like kind of unbearable or like from manageable to unbearable would be the Rekka chain. I would like it if they made her like answering her answering Rekka more stable. You can always theoretically punish it 
but the risk award is so skewed that it's like, it's dicey. But if you don't mash on her, she gains a ton of meter, which means that the RPS only gets worse. And again, the longer you go on, the more risk is a factor, which means that if she's gaining meter, she's probably going to kill you. <laughs> which means the fucked up thing is she gets to do this to you anywhere. And there's no stable response. Hitting a two frame window, not only in a row, but against a move where that you can vary the timing is basically impossible consistently. Uh, to be honest with you, even as someone playing against Happy Chaos, I'm not as... I find him his existence a little confusing because I don't I don't buy people's perception that like he's like this like untouchable god. Definitely if you play like a shitty a shitty matchup he definitely is. I find it intriguing that a lot of people are like he's like an adamant like one. Common like discussion point when it comes to uh, the game is that it's unreliable because you just die right in one hit but like if that's the case then if you cornered happy chaos shouldn't you just win like shouldn't it just it just win like automatically it's kind of contradictory in a way that like usually i use other people's opinions to to kind of like think about it myself but for the most part uh i mean i think he's really gay i think he's like um he's like around third pretty much like no matter what a lot of the discussions for it are kind of weird i've thought about having a discussion about like with with people about him because like most people just make no sense to me a lot of the time it just looks like people were kind of like salty that umi show just cooked them <laughs> happy chaos is really good but like the, the reasons why people say he's good make no sense. It's like the same, it's like the same sense of like when people talk about like soul and they're like, oh yeah, the reason why he's so good is because far ass is broken. Hatashi has the only interesting take I love, nerf his guard cancel, guard, guard crush, take it away, rework his regular bullet frame data. The guard crush zoning is 100% an oversight, right? Like easily, like super free. It's easily an oversight. That would already make interacting with him way better because then like he does no chip damage to you so if that's all you're concerned about then like he still has god footsie buttons his problem isn't that he zones you it's annoying right like a lot of people will say like his zoning is is like the most broken shit in the game and it, it for matchups like obviously like nago and shit it is but like all of his buttons are like godly if you balance this character you have to decide are you going to either make him a zoner or are you going to make him a like a mid-range character oh i want to talk about leo too oh my god there's so many characters i want to talk about you may you may have thought the last one was a hot take i think leo could be like one of the better characters of the game like like more than i mean a lot of people put him pretty highly but i personally don't right now i put him like around like yeah, he's top five but he's like you know he's not in top three but i feel like a lot of leo players take unnecessary risks because of how of how powerful and simple his approach is when i think of like leo players that have always like impressed me the ones that just like when they flail out on you and then they just like actually play mutual with you that shit is ham that's the scariest shit but i feel like a lot of leo players just kill themselves just because like his it's so easy to be like ignorant with him because like it's it's good right like it's not terrible it's just like it's not as consistent as it could be believe it or not this i don't mind leo that much a lot of people really hate him but like again he's in the same category as he's in the same category as like you know for me where like i don't really mind him that much to me i think he's he's like pretty pretty balanced i think geo's good but like again i think ty and days are just very good i normally don't think about best players in terms of like who i i put a lot of stock into as like a a respectable player days impressed me so much as a player like i'm i'm like a hundred i think very very highly of him and i think a lot of people put a lot of stock into G it being geo where it's it's just him the thing about geo is like and honestly characters like kai and soul and may is a lot of them are very like because of the way that they run strike throw damage like in the game is directly like going to tie to their success when it comes to those sort of characters strike throw and risk is usually going to be dependent on the sort of damage if they increased damage usually you'd want to nerf their offense depending on uh how they run or like to the degree of what they change and how they change the system mechanics usually risk is going to be the key factor but in general i would say that they should nerf risk risk being nerfed is like the the big thing that i think they should stabilize across all characters like i i think most characters should have fast risk gain basically <laughs> Because <laughs> risk is a lot of damage. A lot of people don't really understand like the caveat of how much damage one 
bar of like one point of risk adds. If you were to just directly nerf damage and you nerfed like what made these characters strong, you would essentially make almost every strike throw character in the game bad. Let's assume that they're just going to do what I was talking about with they reduce the damage, which I would like, slightly through risk and slightly in numbers. You would want to one, make a lot of normals better when it comes to running offense, make it more incentivizing to actually commit or, you know, make those sort of interactions easier to understand. Actually, you know what? I think they should hit six Ps. You know, I'm gonna give you guys a hot fucking take. You guys, I don't like how easy it is to answer in this game. To me, I really love the old ways of if you answered, you had to know where you were, where what move they were doing above you, and you had to know what angle you were at. That's like the one change I hated in open beta one to two. Cause like I, I spent my whole ass life learning to ant here and now I just I just turn off my written press a button. <laughs> I don't mind them as much as a ground tool, but like definitely if they're going to maintain a ground tool as well as a super powerful ant here, then they need to have some fucking recovery. Like, at least 10 frames recovery. 10 or 15 frames recovery. When people start doing shit like 6p whiff, 6p whiff in front of me, I'm like, too much bong water, yeah. Um, guts, I would like to have. I like guts to be a little more, a little better in this game. It feels like they're a little lackluster, but I think that's also a product of like risk in this game as well. By nerfing risk, you do so so much to really help this game. It's actually wild. I don't know if you guys remember, they actually made it so if you broke the wall, even with a pixel, you would not die. If you, you could not die from wall damage. It would always leave you with a tiny pixel. It makes the game, I think like, it's weird because I think it makes the game slower and awkward, but it, like in terms of like how it benefits the game, it, it's also good. If you hit six Ps, wall damage and risk, you'd be doing a lot to the game already. So like to compensate for that, that you'd have to be a lot better at like I think nitpicking the smaller interactions between characters. Kai has like a really strong fire outs, right? It's still pretty good. It's 12 frame startup. Pretty good. I think if damage is nerfed, then like you have to be more willing to compensate for characters like Kai or Faust, or they would all have to be they would all have to be leaning towards having stronger and more specific frame data buttons. I think like a lot of the changes would be better if they like let's say manually adjusted a lot of the frame data rather than directly nerfing a lot of the moves otherwise. Faust is like a great example of this. I actually think Faust is the worst character in the game. Faust is designed in a way that he's supposed to control space, but there's no real advantage of controlling space. Even if like they gave him like juiced items, I don't think that would really change much because like his his threat of shit is still like so low that it doesn't really matter. Unless like he just, unless he like gets meteors like nine times out of 10 every time or some shit like that. Like, fantastic example of it done right is Nago, right? Because Nago is like, he's supposed to make you afraid to approach him and he fucking, he does that shit, right? Wait, I didn't know this. A character wearing an afro loses upper body invincibility on their six feet. I never knew this, by the way. I've played this whole time and I never knew this. Me, I'm actually not that certain about. I think like, again, she's in the same category as, as Sol, where she should just, all, she's built to always do damage. Like she, she's always meant to like do high damage to you no matter what. My perception of Mei is very influenced by Exert and Plasar. A lot of how she functions, I can't really be creative about at the same time, to be honest with you. Cause like, like before Mei basically could set play you. Whereas now she's just pure strike throw. So it's like, how do you really make her better without like, you know, do you make her air game more reliable? Well, if you make her air game more reliable, then how do you do that without really changing 6Ps currently? I feel like a lot of what she would need is just like stability, right? Like I know a lot of main players hate beach ball, right? But it's hard to buff her, right? Cause it's like, look at all her special moves. It's like, you can't go too ham on dolphin. You can't buff overhead kiss too much. And then you have beach ball. So it's like a lot of her changes are going to be pure in numbers and that's it. Unless they add more moves. But I mean, that's uh, Anji. Anji is a great example too. Cause like, he's like kind of the same boat where you just have to make him more stable. But the problem is like spin is spin you cannot let be too strong. You know what I mean? Like it's very easy for it to be too strong. If you think any character right now, like any character we've seen would be as bad as like a frame three auto guard Anji, you don't even like, that would be the worst character to be top tier 
by far. Probably make Fujin like not punishable by DPs, for example. Like that's the sort of thing I would expect. And then uh, they would nerf all of his follow-ups. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my read. And honestly, he'd probably be a much better character than he is right now if he was able to do that, because then he'd be able to at least threaten way more off Fujin, and then that's already much better. Also, they, they should make it super better. That shit sucks. Uh, Biken, Biken, I, th I feel like, again, like her her problem is that like she's leaned too far in one direction, and they're clearly too afraid of it. Like Her getting a knockdown off of eight, like Hikabari so consistently is huge, considering her kit. And it's clear they're really afraid of making her too strong because of it. Oh, her super, her 2D6, 2D6S, I think should be buffed to take and firm more consistently. I don't think too highly of um, a tether. Sorry, it's tether. It's not terrible, but like a lot of the time, like because of how the, her, like how she is, the risk reward is skewed in the other person's favor usually. Zato, I, I don't have much problems with, honestly. I actually really like Zato in this game. I think the only, like, I think if you hit six Ps already, you'd be, you'd already be hitting Zato, to be honest, and damage. If you really do not like, Zato, I guess like you could ask for more stability and in, in interacting with Eddie, I guess. But like that's really it. I, I feel like he's pretty balanced. Though you know, uh, actually, you know what I wouldn't mind with with Zato in this game. I would, I'd like it if they actually buffed the Eddie gauge, like when he's active, and then nerfed the the recovery. I think it'd be cool if they leaned him more into uh, that and made it way more punishing for being wrong, rather than just creating like a stall situation or an RPS. One. Gold Pulit. Honestly, I hate this character's design. I think it's like Behemoth is like the concept's cool, but I think like Guard Crush is just so whack. Again, like Gold Lewis to me feels like the type of character where if you don't know what he's doing, he's gonna kill you. But if you know what he's doing, he's just free. Uh, I'm like 90% confident Gold Lewis is the type of character they're never going to touch again. Like they just dropped him, they dropped him off and left him here. To me, it feels like they just, they they probably won't do anything with him. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how much Arxis has changed. But if this is like Exert, they would just get rid of, they would just leave him. That's, that is it, like 100%. I have a little bit of a hot take that may, that may doom the Potemkin players. I would love it if they actually buffed all his buttons and nerfed Mega Fist. If they made Mega Fist like unusable like an Exert and then made him like actually like god buttons, I would love that. That would make me so happy. I feel like Mega Fist has like not only ruined the perception of like how to play Potemkin for like 90% of the like the player base, but also like I, like it's just not cool. Like who who's like, oh yeah, this this move looks so cool. I want to use this all the time. Who does that? Who says that? I, I don't like grapplers having scramble scramble options. Just be more stable. I feel like that'd be such a good change. I'm I'm gonna warn you guys now. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a chip apologist. You know, I dealt with chip uh, like when he was like really cursed. So like when the nerfs happened to him in the last patch, I was like, I don't really think he needed that. I don't mind his jump 2K being the way it used to be. I don't think too highly of chip because most of his stuff is interactable. Again, the risk reward is way too skewed currently. Like Genro, you can react and throw. Alpha blades, uh, ground you can throw or mash into. I mean, you can do it diagonally, but it's a lot harder. But <clears throat> I think gamma is okay. I don't know, like it's just the risk reward currently is just way too skewed. It's hard for me to like be like, oh, this is so broken after I've dealt with extra gamma and I hate saying that but it's like the being able to counterplay something when you're so used to it being having literally no counterplay is like it changes you <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that it changes you. Let's talk about Axel because Axel's kind of cl close to it. Axel, I feel like, is like the is also in the same sort of bubble of like he's got such weak risk of work consistently. Most of the time, like just playing like smart RPS of approaching him is like so favorable because no other character can or most other characters will out damage him unless he has very specific hits. It's like the the only thing that he's really good at is he's kind of annoying at stopping you from approaching, but I, I think like he's pretty lackluster. And Axel is also, by the way, one of those characters that early on they're very good and then as time goes on they're considered very bad. I think his frame data is just too bad. Like looking at his special moves, it's just so hard for me to be like, oh yeah, like 2p being minus 13. I guess, can you, I guess you can't see it, I'm sorry. My horn's kind of covering it. Amelia's kind of designed to be like good in the air and on the ground, right? 
But I, I always view Milia as uh, more of a footsies character for like a like good footsies character. Milia players tend to rely on like her air game. I think it's her least consistent part. It's good in the sense that it allows her to like force more interactions and she has more, she has threats from the air and her air movement's very good. Uh, a lot of people I think focus too much on it as the main approach rather than using the ground as well. A lot of the things I would want, again, would be direct nerfs or sorry, buffs to her her grounded button. Specifically, I want Far Slash and 2D in 5K and probably even 2K to get some buff. Like directly her her ground moves that, that are reliable. I would prefer her air movement, her, her air stuff to be a lot more, a lot better in exchange for her air buttons being worse. It would force people to also just be a lot smarter than, and then just not force like poor RPS. Where Jacko is in a good place, believe it or not. But I think her execution is like not good. I feel like like defend is kind of worthless, right? Like I, I guess countdown too. Like most of these like there's not as much reliable options for it. These are like overtly committal and not really worth it. Like why would you do those over just attacking? Because the attacking's so good. She's got the happy chaos problem on offense, where like her offense is so fucking good if she starts it, and it's like you're like she's just gonna chip you out if she gets to that point. I don't mind that personally. I can I can block for thirty seconds. I'm pretty certain this is actually like you cannot stop this for example from here they have like a lot of sh like jacko has a lot of shit like this right where it's um jacko can force things like this more commonly than you think it's just her neutral is so bad right the thing is if you made her slightly better with that same sort of neutral or like with the same sort of offense then that's a problem i think hi much highly of her than like the average person does like one thing alone the fact that kazunoko plays her is a red fucking that's a red flag right there i bet you if you nerfed all the top tiers she would she would pop up as a contender like if in this patch i'm not joking but uh let me be clear everything i just said probably will not happen <laughs> <laughs> you see, probably what's actually gonna happen is Happy Chaos gets buffed, uh, Potemkin gets nerfed, Ram loses Rekka and then gets like a bazooka, Baikin goes up a cup size, Milia just dies, like she's just removed from the game. It's just, that's just RX's balance.